Thanks to Greg at EgoSoft for providing me with the keys to the X4 Tides of Avarice, Cradle of Humanity, and Split Vendetta Expansions. Space. It's pretty big, and there's a lot of it. These are the voyages of Captain Sokka. My mission? To start with one ship and 10,000 credits and make a name for myself. Will I trade? Will I fight? I don't know. But join me, won't you? This is X4, a roleplay series. All right, Miss Brax, you may be wondering why we are here in Sokka's junkyard, and the answer is clear. We have a cock infestation just on our border that we will be dealing with swiftly. And take a look at what we have found. So I learned that the rattlesnake is pretty profitable to try to snag, and we haven't had one yet. Let me introduce to you to Captain Colt in charge of this brand new rattlesnake that we have uh, upgraded at our shipyard and uh, made as best with the parts that we know best and they will be joining this assault on the cock as well. As you can see we're up to 609 million credits. Uh, we've been doing a lot of jobs in the off time that is for sure capturing ships leveling up our marines, getting them some experience on the Hong, as well as just general trading. So we're not too far away from that 800 million credit prize tag that Dal Busta wants for the Court of Curbs. So without further ado, let's get the fleet in position and commence the attack. So that the Tiger's Claw isn't trying to stage and launch fighters and get all of that stuff, the Tiger's Claw will be providing uh, support. So we are going to move the protect position out here just short of the defense stations. Tiger's Claw will move into position there. Miss Brax, if you please, go ahead and uh, let's coordinate an attack on that defense platform. And Ithaca turning about, the Rattler turning about, the Lily and the Nightshade, of course, and the King is somewhere uh, around as well. There's the King flying overhead, and we will be uh, heading to our, um, to the sector end. And uh, starting that assault, hopefully, we can take it down fairly quickly. And of course, Captain Old Mencken takes leading the charge in the Ithaca. It's amazing the just sheer speed that the Paranid uh, destroyers have, that is for sure. Uh, but luckily, he's going to stop just short as we prepare for this attack and get everyone into position. Tiger's Claw is also moving into position to protect from any cock that may come into the system. And we will watch shortly and see if the Ithaca is uh, staging in a good place or if the cock is going to start crawling out of the woodwork. And there's the D4s of Doom right in front of us, that uh, defense station here. And it is going to be uh, an interesting assault with multiple defense platforms around. Uh, we focus on the central pillar, but of course, uh, as we move forward and get everyone in, uh, the side defense platforms are going to have something for us as well. All right, five out of six ships have reached their launching point, waiting on the Lily to get into position, which shouldn't be too awful long. And when that is done, Miss Brax will launch the assault and we'll start to see, there we go. Looks like everyone is moving in and let's get this done. Hong opening fire, here come the cock warping in. And with all turrets firing on all enemies, we should be okay, but this is a whale of fire as uh, more cock ships are coming in. But it looks like good positioning from the King and the Lily. Looking for the Rattler. All right, Ithaca holding back there. All right, Rattler is making its way on that left side of the installation as well and really opening fire here. Tiger's Claw has arrived and will assist in that fighter suppression. I don't want the Tiger's Claw to be actually firing on the main installation. I just want them to cover us and have their turrets help us deal with these uh, cock that are spawning in while we deal with the main installation. All right, one section already down. That's what I like to see. Continuing to fire on the main installation itself. King 
coming over the top. Of course, laser turrets are uh, doing well keeping those cocks suppressed. And come on, Tiger's Claw, get you some. Tiger's Claw has rejoined in. Outstanding. Kind of side slipping there. <laughs> Miss Nakano, that I don't know what you're doing, but that uh, seems to be working. Right, Rattler Shields holding up well. Everyone else's shield seems to be holding. If anyone seems to be taking a lot of uh, impact, we'll pull them out. But everyone seems to be doing okay so far. And it looks like maybe the installation itself is down. And we need to adjust fire a little bit. Nope. Oh man, I tell you what. The Rattler under heavy fire. Is the Tiger's Claw? Yeah, Tiger's Claw is moving to assist the Rattler. That's why I like to see. Good teamwork. Nice. King has positioned high to take that upper section. Looks like the other ships are shooting on that upper section as well with the Ithaca and the Nightshade. Lily holding, shooting the left-hand side, assisting the Rattler. And I don't know at this point if I want to take command of the Hong and start really lowering the boom with our main cannon. It might not be a bad idea. Miss Brax, thank you for getting us into position. I will take it from here and use what we have learned from our Xenon assault to really lower the boom on this thing. Setting the large turrets to attacking the current enemy, that way the big um, pulse cannons there are gonna be doing the work. And our uh, medium turrets will be taking care of any D4s that might be trying to uh, pester us a bit. Rattlesnake down to half shield, so we'll tell the Rattlesnake to we sort of bamf out breath. a bit. Right, Rattler pulling out, 44% shield, so everything is okay now. Rattler should be getting uh, their shields back. Nice, one more section looks to be going down, there we go. Continue to focus on the sides and everyone else should readjust. There's another section gone. All right, Rattler, you can uh, remove all orders. And Rattler will just uh, sort of assist. Oh, I don't like the king going in there and really getting close. We'll see if their shields can uh, hold. But the king has always been uh, one of the first to jump in and really uh, draw fire. With some of these intersections gone, they may not be able to do enough damage to the king to really uh, bop their shields. All right, sort of moving over to get uh, ourselves to the part of the installation that hasn't been destroyed. Uh, it's like a junkyard trying to shoot through that. So we'll uh, readjust the hong here and uh, start leveling it from the left-hand side. All right, holding station well. Ithaca has moved in uh, and the king has readjusted to the back side. Looks like everyone's shields are holding well and continuing to uh, knock out that installation. All right, we're close enough to that defense platform uh, below us and to the left to take it out. That'll be one less thing here uh, while we focus on the main installation. We may pick off the defense platforms on the outer uh, edges. And that indeed looks to be what we are doing here. So this, we're close enough to get two of the defense platforms down with the Hong and that will only leave two defense platforms as well as the center section. All right, one more defense platform defense down. Platform. 17K, 15K, 13K. All right, let's focus on the center installation then. And since the Rattler is holding station on the outside, looks like they're trying to move in to attack the center, which is fine. Um, everyone else holding well. Nightshade in the middle just taking a little bit of shield damage, but looks like we are able to weather that storm. All right, so the initial fighter support is gone. Everything else is just the stations only, which is helping keep our shields up. Nice beam launch there. All right, looking good. All right, and could the Tiger's Claw do some work here? I believe the Tiger's Claw can now attack. So one thing that got the Tiger's Claw in trouble before when we assaulted stations was Graviton turrets. So as long as the cock don't have any hard hitting turrets like the Graviton, the Tiger's Claw should be able to uh, 
hold and use its turrets to good advantage here. Uh, but if we launch fighters, the beam weapons and whatnot from the installation would definitely wreck them. Oh, there goes another section down. That's what I like to see from the Nightshade and the Ithaca. All right, more fighters coming in. And we still have our turret set to uh, attack all enemies for our medium fighters, or our medium turrets. So fighter support should be knocked out quick, fast, and in a hurry. Oof, the Rattler. <laughs> really up close and personal, but not as much shield damage as before. But something we're definitely going to have to keep in mind, especially if they're going to sit there right in the middle of the installation while it explodes. And that's why I like to see the King holding station right up there. Just a little bit of shield damage. Doesn't look like they can do much to it. And just laying waste right in the center. There is another section gone from the installation. We will adjust and start aiming on this left-hand side here. And I think the Rattler will be far enough away from that not to get uh, explosion splash damage. Dang, another section gone. That's what I like to see. Looks like we've got some here on the low side. We may have to adjust fire and get our turrets in range here. Oh, interesting. So our scrapper decided that they wanted to come closer to the cock installation to do some, uh, some recycling. And one of the Queen's Guard got away. Um, I think our shields will be enough on that Tetua to not really be affected, but that wasn't probably the smartest move they could have done. All right, just adjusting to the backside here, there's a defense platform uh, that we can quickly take care of, and I think that's the one that's hounding the king. So once that defense platform goes down quick, fast, and in a hurry, uh, then we'll be able to focus solely on the installation and uh, lower the amount of damage that is happening to the king as well. And defense platform will bite the dust right now. Outstanding. So is there another defense platform around that we can do while we are here? Yes, indeed. So 6.8k away. And it looks like the king has half shield. So I don't know if the defense platform is contributing uh, to any of that, but we will... Oh crap, what's up with the Rattler? All right, Rattler, go ahead and fly and wait back up. Remove that order. And get back out there to the Tetua, please. So it looks like the Rattlesnake shields are not as uh, solid as our other uh, ships, that is for sure. But the Rattler should be quick enough to get away from that main installation, I hope. Nice, one more section gone, and we seem to be uh, sort of booted away uh, from our uh, from the Nightshade or the Lily. And that is one more defense platform down, so it's now we have just the installation at 35%, and the Rattler has made its escape. No, don't hit the Nightshade. Tokyo. Holy crap, so they pulled out right in front of us. Yeah, let's sort of scooch over a little bit so we are not in direct fire. There we go, now we have a clear line of sight. Boom! Well, that was certainly unexpected. <laughs> One more explosion. And so far, so good. Tell you what, that king is trying to be a hero going straight through the middle of that installation. Shouldn't be too much more damage uh, to get this section done. And it just looks like one little backside over here that the uh, king might be firing on. All right, Rattler has uh, gotten their shields back and under assault from uh, Hive Guards. Hopefully the rattle Rattler will be able to take care of this uh, little group here uh, that is assaulting the Tetua. And everyone else is uh, looking awesome. Tell you what I'll do, there's one last defense platform. We were hit. Up here. Okay, we'll, we'll observe the king. I don't think the king is in dire, dire straits. We'll be getting in to take care of this defense platform real quick and then take a look at the king. Yeah, the king has gotten some damage. Fly and wait and remove this order, please. Get out of there, king. Ithaca still holding strong, so King might need a little bit of repairs after this. The Rattler is coming back to assault the station uh, with full shields and 
luckily towing away those little fighters away from our Tetua. All right, main cannons want to fire on this little section. We will as well. And as the Rattler comes in, he'll be pulling in those fighters. But by the time they get here, hopefully most of the installation will be down so there won't be as many turrets firing on us. And we can really waylay the last 10% or so. All right, King is pulled away. Awaiting orders. Getting their shields back. Let's go ahead and say remove all orders and then the king will start to move in. Nightshade with some shield damage, but not too awful much. And like I said, we're pounding the last little section here. Down to 18% on the overall installation. And everything is looking awesome. Yeah, so everyone is positioning themselves like so. Ithaca, Nightshade, the Tiger's Claw is protecting the side. And the king should be on her way to come back into the fight shortly. All right, down to 10%. The last few are about to fall here. The battle has definitely swung in our direction. So it'll only be a matter of time before this installation is cleared and Sokka's junkyard will be uh, free and clear to be picked, at least until they return. 3%. We are getting down to the nitty gritty. And there is one last portion. Outstanding. Everyone should be adjusting fire on this part right there. Outstanding. If that's where you want to shoot, that's where we're going to shoot. Installation. And Lily is running. Sure. Don't need much cover to deal with this last 1%. A lot of fire from a lot of different locations. Nightshade moving right in to say hello. And yeah, this thing is on its last volley. Sayonara, cock. Get out of my junkyard. Well, that was supposed to be a little... There we go. <laughs> I was going to say it was supposed to be a little bit more dramatic. And on time. The cock installation dealt with. Everything is awesome. And while we were fighting, a lot of stations were doing a lot of profitable stuff. That's what I like to see. Up to 618 million credits. Uh, and what I'll do is I will have the Hong be separate and continue to trade. Uh, the Hong is a pretty decent trader uh, with a pretty fast, uh, good um, cargo sp uh, space. And yeah, so what I'll do is I will have all of our battleships actually link up with the Tiger's Claw. And just in case they uh, want to come back, we'll have the Tiger's Claw do a protection over here next to the processing factory. We'll protect that position. And then that will get all of the other destroyers pulled uh, next to our junkyard. And I don't like the fact that the Tetua is out here doing scrapping uh, but you know uh, sure if the cock don't come back awesome um, and if they do I guess we'll be the first to know as far as the Hong goes though we like to do uh, auto trading in Zyarth's Dominion uh, we can help out the Zyarth and it looks like they have no one really uh, helping them out so most trades are pretty profitable um, if we move there. Miss Brax, uh, head to Zyar's Dominion 4, please, and uh, pick up the profitable stuff. So leaving this scrap yard behind, I don't know if the Tetua will be able to uh, scrap all of this stuff, if this is uh, classified as scrap. I mean, certainly there is a lot of ships around that could be easily scrapped for a lot of um, scrap for our facility. It's just so energy cell dependent that is for sure in the meantime mr jerrigan and i are going to take the gumption's gambit to nopolio's fortune too because i've heard tell in the um distant distant uh space beyond the highway there might be something for us so we are going to head to nopolio's fortune ride the uh highway out and continue on just to see if something is waiting for us out there. 
And just getting you up to speed with our Marines on the Hong, Nana Bro is still leading the charge after several captured ships. Unfortunately, we've lost um, some Marines capturing some rattlesnakes and some Phoenix vanguards. But Nana Bro is uh, still the NCOIC over at Marielle Polar. We have 52 veteran Marines, although some like Wegeris Gattusos Liberus I uh, needs a little bit more uh, experience, but an, an amazing service crew on the Hong for sure. And even in Man Mankatal is uh, almost a specialist himself. So it looks like the Rattler did take some large pulse turret damage, but I'm letting the service crew do the work, try to get some experience. Uh, we've, we've got 56 apprentices and 31 recruit Marines. Um, maybe I can pull some of the service crew off of the Hong and put them on the Rattler um, to sort of average that out. But they do have a specialist and three able crewmen on. Um, but as far as the Marines go, they definitely need a training flight uh, against some traitors or whatnot from the scale plate pact. And luckily, Sokka's Junkyard is literally right next door to a heavy scale Entering plate system. So that wouldn't be too uh, far out of the realm of possibility. But still making our way to Nepalio's fortune now. I should see you when we get there. So faction standings, still perfect with the Argon, still 29 with Antigone. We're up to 19 with the Free Families, 22 with the Pontifex, uh, 30 with the Talati now, so that is all well and good. 14 with the Vigor Syndicate, 22 with the Zarth Patriarchy, so we're even further uh, along with them than before the initial station explosion, and that's why I'm sending the Hong uh, to Zyarth space to try to get that, because if... Okay, the Hong has made her way, so we'll just tell the Hong to remove all orders, and hopefully the Hong will now find a juicy trade for us as we are entering. Entering Nobilius Fortune 2. Pretty good timing indeed. All right, first trade that Miss Brax found, Chelt Meat, 2901. Outstanding. So we are here in uh, Nepalio's fortune. And we just need to hit the highway and apparently keep Hello, on going. Tommy. So I will take over from here, Hello Mr. There. Jerrigan. Hello. Let's get on this highway and head out to the wild blue yonder. And off we go. So apparently, if rumors are to be believed, we just get on and keep going straight. And we will turn off flight assist to keep our speed up, I imagine. At least that is the hope and goal. And then we'll slam on the brakes if we happen to see anything. But this is a massive highway, that is for sure. And yeet. Holy crap. So I did find it. We flew right by it. The Courier Vanguard. All right, let me take a look at all objects. So the Courier Vanguard, interestingly enough, doesn't have an owner. Agricultural Courier Vanguard. So not exactly what I was expecting, but yeah, we could sell that for scrap. All right, Mr. Jerrigan, hold here. Cool. I will be right back, sir. Yeah, I don't know how much this is going to be worth, but I'll take anything for free. Clear. Vanguard. And luckily, coming right into it, there is our data leak. All right, all stop, please. All right. We now have a courier Vanguard with 1,960 storage with a six crew capacity. Yeah, so a nice storage area. I like it, I like it. It's nice and roomy, that is for sure. Let's take a look at the ship information here and see exactly what it's got on it. So a Mark II pulse laser, Mark II shield generators and engine, Mark II thrusters, 17 nav beacons, three laser towers, and one flare. Um, 
I don't know if it's worth it to keep this and have it do something for us. So let's pull someone off of the Tetua so that we can uh, have her fly this thing. And then we'll see what it's uh, worth to scalp and worth to sell. I mean, we have we oh. could probably make this thing. So I'm, I'm guessing those Mark II parts are going to be worth more than the ship itself. All right, Miss Bro, if you please, head to the Argon Wharf, upgrade repair. Uh, let's put on some basic of the basic engines. That's 92,000 there. Let's get the cheapest of the cheap thrusters, so 165,000 there. Let's yank off the shields, another 10,000. Uh, let's yank off the pulse laser. Let's put on the basic software, the basic scanner, and pull off the targeting computer, so 365. And then we have some nav beacons to sell, some laser towers to sell, and some flares to sell. So 411,000, and then once we get it scalped, we will uh, sell the ship and be on our way. All right, Miss Bro, if you please head back to Argon Prime. The next thing I heard about was in Faulty Logic 7 about there. So, Mr. Jerrigan, if you please head to Faulty Logic 7, that is now owned by the, let's see, the pink, is that? Yeah, the Holy Order of the Pontifex. So, luckily, we cleared out the Xenon, and hopefully the Holy Order hasn't gotten their hands on this thing yet. And nice profits from the shipyard and the junks, uh, junkyard, as well as the Claytronics factory. That's what I like to say. Sitting at 631. So, increasing our profits little by little until we reach that 800 million uh, that Dal needs. So, sooner rather than later. And considering how we started this particular endeavor with 2 million trying to save up enough for Dal uh, yeah we've come a long way all right here at faulty logic 7 we're going to head directly to X minus and see if whatever is out here is still out here or if maybe the Paranid or Antigone got to it first we found something out here aha uh -huh. Indeed. Remove all orders and wait. Can I help? Mr. Jerrigan, Goodbye. I will take it from here. And this one, I think, will be worth the price of admission. Odysseus, Vanguard. Sweet. Now, it's not an E, so this must be an old model from the Paranid. Yep, that's a hairdryer. All right, Mr. Jerrigan, I will be right back one mo again. Hello, All right, I like it, I like it. So the dog should be at the top of the ship, I would imagine. But it's got small and a medium landing port. So even maybe Mr. Jerrigan can uh, take over on the Odysseus here and get us to the... Argon Shipyard. Oh, there it is, right on top of the bridge. That's why I like to see. All right, one Odysseus Vanguard acquired. Let's get on the bridge here. Aha, so it's just like uh, the Ithaca. And old Captain Old Mencken ticks his bridge. Um, yeah, let's get the Gumption's Gambit on board. All right, remove all orders, and if you please, uh, dock and wait. All right, so Mr. Jerrigan is going to uh, come aboard. Kind of ever so wonky. Let's meet him on the flight deck and... Make sure he's okay to fly. Mr. Jerrigan, I'm watching. Just uh, don't scratch the paint good, sir. All right, Gumption's Gambit is aboard safe and sound, even though uh, he, had me, he had me worried. Let's get him on the bridge. Ooh, some Mark II shield generators. I like that. And all-around thrusters Mark II. 
uh, that's going to give us some extra money as well as the main ship itself because I don't believe uh, we're going to be incorporating this old model uh, into our fleet. I think we need the money more. Yeah, Mr. Jerrigan, work somewhere else for me, if you please, and uh, come aboard the Odysseus here. All right, let's get this thing picked apart. So we will go with the cheaper all-around engines for 37 grand. Pull off those shields for another 20. Uh, ooh, nice. So we pull those Mark II's off, and we get 800,000 for that. 151,000 for shield generator. That's what I like to see. Uh, we have no large weapons, so no batteries. Uh, but we can pull off all of our turrets. Yeah, the mines really did a good number. We're up to 2.6 million in scrapping it. All right, Mr. Jerrigan, if you please, let's get this honking monstrosity back to Argon Prime. And meanwhile, our courier vanguard has uh, been stripped at the Argon Wharf. We'll go Can ahead and... Uh... Whoa, you feeling okay? There you go. Work somewhere else for me. She was on the Tetua as service crew. Get her back it. aboard there. And then uh, we shall sell this courier vanguard, see how much uh, money it is. Indeed, no crew. Sell ship and 176,000. So not too awful much, but not bad for free. Yeah, I will say that this uh, Odysseus is a chunky boy. That is for sure. I mean, take a look at it. I mean, I like the Ithaca much better now that we have the Odysseus E. Streamlined, low, feeling good. But in another life, I think I would have liked to try to come and get this thing nice and early and uh, have it a, a good mainstay of my fleet. Although I say that and knowing that we can pull several million credits out of this thing right from the get-go, that's uh, another thing to keep in mind as well. All right, Mr. Jerrigan, we have been paid. So uh, just hold fast here at the dock, and then once you are free and clear, uh, you can get back to the Gumption's Gambit, uh, because I don't want the Argon thinking that that is part of the sale as well. Outstanding. Let's can get you. Yep, working somewhere else for me. Gumption's Gambit is right there, if you please. Acknowledged. And then as soon as you get on, uh, go ahead and take off, and uh, we'll get this ship sold. All right, I'll catch you in a minute, Mr. Jerrigan. Now, the moment of truth. Let's see how much they're going to offer us for this Odysseus. All right, final tally is 4.1 million credits. That oh, is orders. what I like to see. All right, Mr. Eric, take care of this ship. It means a lot to me. We have been through a lot together, so treat it with respect. And that wasn't a bad bit of change, was it, Mr. Jerrigan? Outstanding. So let us uh, collect our finances here, see what we end up with at the end of the day. Profitable, profitable, profitable. Ooh, 400,000 for the shipyard, 26 for the power plant. Ends us up with 648.5 million credits on the day. So we need, uh, well, there's another withdrawal there as well. Well, that was the uh, the shipyard. Yeah, so we need uh, 150 million more to satisfy Dal Busta's uh, requirements. So I will go ahead and get on that. There may I may be back next week, maybe not. It just depends on how profitable we can be, uh, what jobs I can find. The station building ones are awesome, and if I can find more rattlesnakes to capture, that's always a good time. But uh, we will buckle down, get that money, and I will see you when we are ready to get back to Dalbusta. See ya.